So one more thing. Uh, so there always is one more thing. And uh, a number of you have been asking and a number of you have been when we've advertised this through social media and uh, through LinkedIn and whatnot. People have said, what about scripting? Well, scripting is something we've not really talked about too much today already. But scripting provides customized automation for a lot of workflows. So we're going to look at a couple of very, very simple scripts um, directly within this data set. And then Klaus has got a video um, afterwards, which we've done with uh, some data with the BLK to go. But effectively, this is a JavaScript solution. Um, we have some pre-installed scripts. There's also some scripts on uh, GitHub, if you're aware of that. It's like a, a code sharing platform. But effectively, you import the data as you would. You process using a script, and then you can export the data. And you can also share your scripts. Um, and you can customize any that we provide you as well. But to write a specific process, you can use all the existing functions from Cyclone 3DR within the JavaScript language. So what we're finding now, and Klaus has facilitated this, and we're facilitating in other parts of Europe, is people are coming to us saying, I have a need to do this using scripting. Um, and whether that's working in partnership with the team uh, who write Cyclone 3DR, or putting you in partnership with JavaScript programmers, um, I think Klaus made the point that if you've got some knowledge around JavaScript in your offices, then use it. Yeah, exactly. you know, as, a, as a future skill for people who are sitting processing this data to have some knowledge around JavaScript and implementing with it within the scripting. Um, it, it, it really is highly customizable and completely achievable yourselves. Um, there is some really good script writing help built directly into the solution. Um, and there's a couple of pre-installed scripts that we're going to look at now. So we've got curb extraction um, and electric line extraction. Um, and as I said, there's more scripts available at GitHub. So I think the last one that I saw on GitHub was like a clash detection one. Um, yeah. So uh, that, that has been uploaded by someone. So someone has come up with a clash detection tool and that's been uploaded to GitHub. So uh, by all means, check out GitHub. And if you've got Cyclone 3DR, you can download those and you can drag and drop them. Um, into the interface, so they're always permanently loaded to your solution. So let's just jump into um, our scripting. Here we go. So what you can see here, we've got a mobile mapping data set. Um, so it's quite, a, it's quite, it's just quite a small data set, really, in terms of uh, in the grand scheme of things. But if you zoom down uh, down to you know, ground level, you can see you know, we've got some uh, nice curb lines, we've got some road lines, we've got some buildings and structures. I think this is probably from the Pegasus 2 by the look of the cleanliness of the data. But one thing that we have got, actually, there's a building somewhere down here, I think, at this end of the, at this end of the data set. Um, so this, like I said, some of the tools from Cyclone Survey and Cyclone 2 Topo have come across here. So one thing we can do, um, what I'm gonna do, I think, uh, let's just, if we extract, uh, let's flick up on cloud, Oops, excuse me, let's cancel that out. Oh, that was it, I wanted to show you um, the ability to use the ground point selection um, when draw drawing and digitizing a polyline. So I've actually selected the polyline tool in this example. But what you can see now is as I'm moving along the building, can you see the blue line moving across the bottom? So even if I pick at the top, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pick at the top. And as I pick along the top of this building, you can see, and I'm going to hit return, that that polyline, I'm going to escape out of this function, but that polyline has been created down that bottom end. So they're just some of the tools in terms of extraction that allow you to be really, really, um, really quick within uh, within Cyclone 3DR. What I'm going to do now, actually, I'm just going to create a couple of lines over here on this curb line. Um, I have shared something similar to this on LinkedIn recently. I think I did the overhead line extraction, but I'm just going to create a couple of lines on these curbs. So I'm just going to do a polyline and I'm going to say uh, point on selection. And I'm just going to draw a couple of lines here. So I'm not going to be particularly accurate about this just to get the process running. And I'll just do the same for the bottom of the curb. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, you can see I could obviously manually, I could do this, I could draw and digitize, but now we're gonna to go to the scripting um, solution. I'm just gonna exit out of that command. I'm gonna go script, I'm gonna go curb extraction. So if you create more, you can actually add them directly to this uh, part of the toolbar. I think Klaus has got five yep. or six within his uh, interface. Uh, but I'm gonna to go to the curb extraction and then this will invoke the script and you can see then we've got the, uh, the the curb extraction parameters. So this will depend entirely on the coding um, and who's made it as to what this looks like. But then you can put in here, you know, the sampling step, the curb width, et cetera. Now, I'm not going to change any of these. I'm going to say uh, we're going to do maximum curb length, something like 20 meters. And I'm going to press OK. Now, it'll say select one line or two lines to initiate the curb extraction. So I'm just going to make sure that we, and I'm going to say OK, and make sure we then select in here, shift select those two lines. Oh, control, so there you go, so they're both selected. And all I do now is just hit play, and that will start 
So I'm just going to say OK again, and that will now run the script. And what's brilliant about this is I, as I zoom out, you can see this is being run real time, but I can still navigate and move around and see how that script is growing. So all of those people who've manually had to extract curves out of mobile mapping data over the years, or even terrestrial laser scanning data, this is a fantastic solution. So what I've, I've spoken to the um, I've spoken to the programmers, and ideally, you know, it would be fantastic if we can then start putting in, you know, edge of path, top of curb, bottom of curb, you know, road center line, and do all of them at once, which is obviously going to take more processing power. But that then is now just working along the data set, and it will probably extend 20 meters along there based on the um, the tools that I've just put in. So that is the uh, that's the curb extraction function. So that's now finished. Um, so once I'm finished and that they're, they're now created, I don't need to accept or anything. I can just close that down. But what you can see in here, you can see an ex explanation of the parameters, how to use the script. And then obviously you can change any of the code and resave this um, as you want. So you could effectively create a copy of this and then you could tweak the settings to give you a slightly different output. So that's the, uh, the curve extraction. Now, the other one, this is the one that I find most impressive just in, in terms of the sheer speed is when you've got overhead lines like this on this data set. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to navigate over to here a little bit so you can see. Um, and I'm going to use the electric line extraction. Now the electric line extraction is slightly different because it doesn't actually require you to pick anything other than the point cloud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the point cloud. He says, there you go. So the point cloud is the point cloud is picked. Okay, there you go. There's the point cloud is picked. And then that is the extraction done. I haven't, I've, I've not even really touched anything. And there you go, there is your, your red line. So if I just close this down and if I turn off the point cloud, that, that is the extent of that line that has just been created automatically using the script. So you can see it's incredibly fast. It's gone all the way down to this end. And then we would just repeat that on the other parts of the data set where we want to extract that data. So for me, I think we're at the beginning of the journey in terms of scripting. I think there's so much more. Cloud, what's your view on that, Klaus, in terms of the scripting side of things? I think scripting is just a part of it too. Also, uh, every every single tool which we see in a tool in all our toolbars is a script basically. Yeah, yeah. So now we just have an addition to it mm -hmm. to make things more repetitive but more automated. Yeah. I so, mean, I, I see like where you've done the analysis of that building and you've done one level is almost writing a script so that it just does floor one through ten. I, how yeah. how tall is your building? Twenty stories. What do you want to achieve? X, Y, Z, boom, and here's the report on the back. I just see it getting to that point of automation where people are doing repeatable surveys and producing an end result. So um, that's, that's a good. Yeah, and uh, well, so so the, the questions still remain for some people that, you know, how do we create these scripts? Um, you know, by all means, if there's a consultancy angle there from our side that we need to address, then that's something we can discuss. But at the end of the day, um, you know, there are people out there that know this language and, and certainly Klaus has put our customers in touch with JavaScript programmers to help uh, develop custom tools within Cyclone 3DR. But a really, really powerful little tool. So that was our one more thing. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed our scripting and survey tools. Ah. Now this is one more thing. This is your project class, so I'll let you. I'll let you talk. But that is not Klaus. That is uh, Martin Harrington from the UK. Looks after Region South. Um, so Klaus, over to you for this. So, exactly. so what we want to do here is just testing, challenging the BLK to go in a different environment. Here, tree survey. So at the end of it, we want to get a tree survey out of it. How to do it? We need to get every single trunk of each individual um, uh, tree. And here we just separate. Our point cloud. Use a digital terrain model. Use the best fit uh, circle to each trunk and send it to AutoCAD. But now, okay, we optimize our workflow in how do we get already all the circles out of it. Now we have a little script to actually also say we want to have every single radius for the trunk automatically with it. And here we see the end product of it. Then so it's basically more than half of the work done mm -hmm. to create a tree survey. So I mean, from that point of view, we've uh, you've seen you've seen blk to go data in a quite a challenging environment and you thought exactly. and I, I saw a similar example with this that was done with uh, terrestrial scan data but it was a graveyard so they were extracting yeah. out the, the the center point of each grave and then pushing that to a gis platform but again using scripting it's so it, a similar it, way it just applied in a different environment yeah yeah so that i mean you've seen there like one it's blk to go data which is exciting in itself for, yeah. for that environment but uh, you've used scripting you've used extraction you've used a very very actually a very simple method straight out into a CAM platform.